and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This morning we celebrate the bright feast of Pentecost. It's the commemoration of the fulfillment of the promise that the Lord gave to his disciples that after he departed he would send them another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And so 50 days after his resurrection, the Holy Spirit fell upon the disciples as we heard described in the epistle reading this morning, filling them with praise, glory, with tongues, proclaiming the glad tidings of Christ in different languages. Not surprisingly, American Christianity, if I can speak of that, has usually limited this understanding of the Holy Spirit, this work of the Holy Spirit, to that of power, works of power. In the 1980s and 1990s, especially the among the so-called charismatic Christians. Books were published about power evangelism, power healing. And the impression left was that if one were full of the Holy Spirit, he could zap diseases and zap demons with tasers of the Holy Spirit. If you couldn't do that, then you didn't have the grace of the Holy Spirit. Certainly the work of the Holy Spirit involves demonstrations of power. Paul pointed that out and said that his own Proclamation of the gospel came with a demonstration of power against the kingdom of darkness. With the Lord's anointing, demons are driven from people. Illnesses are healed, there's no question, but it's not simply about power. It never was simply about power. The Lord said that the Spirit would also convict the world of righteousness. St. Paul frequently exhorted Christians to walk by the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So often his teaching with regard to the Holy Spirit emphasized holiness, righteousness, purification. To the Corinthians he wrote, having such promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all uncleanness, from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The Lord imparts his grace to us through the Holy Spirit. And as we strive to purify our hearts, that grace works to cleanse us of our sins, to change us. We're called to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, for God is at work within us. How is he at work within us? By the Holy Spirit. Little by little, he changes us into the image of God as we cooperate with the grace of God. And the image of our Lord is one of holiness. I want to stress that the goal is not about keeping rules and regulations, but striving to acquire the grace of the Holy Spirit. So as to be changed into the image and likeness of Christ and thus enter into the deepest and most profound union and communion with God the Father. Many have had the experience of making a pilgrimage to a holy place, particularly to a monastery, And while there, they receive great grace, which is understandable. The monastery is a place saturated with prayer, which attracts the grace of God. And when we're there, we benefit from that. We receive grace. But returning home, so often they immediately lose it. When they examine what happened, often the loss came because they became angry with someone. Some blessed soul cut them off on the freeway and received the wrath of their tongue. Something or something happened as soon as we opened the door and stepped inside and the children misbehaved and we find ourselves empty of the grace of God. I remember when I was serving as chaplain for the convent in Washington, how many times did I drive back so full of the grace of God, praising God, and within less than a minute sometimes of opening the door and walking inside, losing it all right there as I yelled at the kids because of something they were doing. How long did it take me to figure out that it wasn't the kids that were the problem? That it was me, that I was the one spilling the grace of God. They weren't taking it from me. It's a rather simple trap that the devil lays for us to stumble us, and it's amazing how successful he is with that simple little trap. St. Paul exhorts us to cleanse ourselves so that we will become fit vessels for use in God's temple. To be a vessel full of the Holy Spirit, we have to cleanse ourselves. The grace of God doesn't come to reside in uncleanness. To maintain the grace, to hold on to the grace that God gives us, we must walk worthy of the gospel by which we've been called. 
To increase the grace that we receive, we must continue the process of purifying our hearts and our minds. In thinking about that, I thought of St. Siloan the Athenite, one of the most beloved saints of the 20th century. He was not born full of the Holy Spirit. He was not born praying in the uncreated light of God in his crib. He grew up living a somewhat profligate and sinful life. It was only in repentance and turning away from that reckless and sinful life and striving for the grace of God that Siloan began to be changed into the saint that he became. But with most of us, we call out to God for grace, not in order to change our lives, but for God to change our circumstances. Our circumstances aren't good. We want them changed. But we don't actually want to change our own lives. I'm poor. I'm ill. I'm unhappy. I'm bored. I'm depressed. Whatever it happens to be, God, fix it. Fix it. Fix that. Don't fix me. Don't change me. But rather, we should call out for God's mercy, that our lives would be changed, that we would learn how to live within the circumstances that God has allowed to come to us. Yes, God loves us as we are, but as many as have pointed out, he loves us too much to leave us that way. He intends for us to become like him, and that requires a change that only the Holy Spirit can accomplish within us. But he cannot accomplish that change unless we cooperate with the grace that we receive. And that's hard work. That's spiritual labor. That's spiritual warfare. It requires perseverance, patience, endurance, striving. And when we hear that, most of us say, that's too much for me. Besides, I'm getting started late in life, so I'm not going to become a great saint. What's the point? Well, with that kind of attitude, you're not going to become a little saint either. Never mind a great one. But the fact is that even the slightest effort towards holiness, even the slightest effort of repentance, the smallest effort of repentance has great consequences, not only for you, but for all of us. It's like throwing a small rock into the lake. The ripples seem to go on and on, even beyond your vision. So it is when you make the smallest effort to repent and live according to the gospel. That small effort has a ripple effect. First, it brings a response of grace from the Lord in your own life. But then it produces a small ripple of grace around you. Your family, your friends, your co-workers, even those you come in contact with just on the street, are affected to one degree or another by that ripple of grace. If you come into contact with someone who has also made a small effort toward grace, the effect on each of you is increased, and so it goes. I often tell parents, if you will strive to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, if you will strive to acquire the grace of God, not only will this change your own life, but it will change the lives of your children as well, as well, without them even knowing it, without you recognizing it. It will happen little by little as the Spirit works within us. It not only profits you, but it pays dividends in the lives of others around you. Saint Seraphim of Saroff is well known for this teaching. Acquire the grace of the Holy Spirit, he said, and thousands around you will be saved. So the most important gift that you can give another, the most important blessing that you can give to another is to seek the grace of God for your own life. But don't simply seek the grace of God. Certainly don't seek the grace of God to fix things or to fix other people. Change your life. Cleanse your life so that you can maintain the grace of God that you receive and increase it by becoming a fit vessel for God's use. It seems impossible. And the reality is you can't change your life. Only God can and only God will if you try to change your life. May he who sent his Holy Spirit upon his disciples also count us to be his disciples this morning, now and always, and send his Holy Spirit to us. Amen.